as a child, a very, very, very small child, probably around four or something. One of the strangest and most out of place memories I have were uh, something that I would have totally thought it was, it never happened. It feels like it didn't happen. If it wasn't for the fact that all my life I've remembered that that happened. I, I don't think my family actually remembers that that it happened or if they do it was just one of those things that are so surreal and just impossible that it's something that just became forgotten for everybody I think but yes one of those memories is by far me seeing Beetlejuice in real life like in the house <laughs> It sounds weird. I've I've talked about this several times with people, like over the years, and and I even talked about it in one of the videos, randomly. I don't I don't remember why I did it, but I did it. I don't remember which one. I think it was the Ginger Snaps two review. I think something like that. I don't remember why they came in, it came into the conversation, but yeah. So this is gonna be uh, at the top of my head. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's, let's, let's just begin. Let's not keep, like, anybody waiting anymore. Uh, I'm gonna start with the actual Beetlejuice story so that, yeah, you know, you don't have to stay throughout the whole video, uh, in order to, to wait for that one. Because it's, spoiler alert, is the most interesting one. For context, for anybody who wants to give it some other kind of explanation, I don't care. I don't care what kind of explanation uh, anybody wants to give it. I I have considered everything, and I'm I'm open to any kind of 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 opinion of like a lot of people that I've talked to actually have believed me. I don't know if they have been genuine or or if is if it's been one of those things that are have been like. Um, out of just politeness or something, they just don't want to be rude, and they just like kind of, you know, nod and say, "Oh yeah, okay, yes, that's really interesting." I don't know. As I said, it doesn't matter. I don't care. It's almost irrelevant because at the end of the day, it's something that happened back in nineteen ninety two or three or whatever. How whenever that happened I don't remember I don't even remember exactly how many times this event happened probably not too many times probably uh, I, re I always remember it as I used to see it but it, it couldn't have been more than two or three times I can't imagine more than that I'm 37 right now and I was like three four or five years old when that happened and for the longest time ever, it kind of, it disappeared from my memory. And this is the thing. Throughout my whole life, I remember seeing that. And that happened. Everybody experienced it. Through me, of course. So, yeah. Anyways, as a little bit of introduction to the whole thing. I used to be a huge fan of Beetlejuice. I still am. I've always liked that movie. All, all my life. But as a little child... It used I, I was just crazy about I don't remember if it was my first favorite movie. I don't think so. My first fa favorite movie must have been I don't know anything. I don't remember. And I was obsessed, obsessed, like obsessed. And my mom used to get really angry about me watching it. And she had that movie forbidden in the house. She would tell my sisters, all of them, older sisters than me, like to watch out if they showed the movie or anything. And I remember in that time, there, there, it was when they were airing the cartoon show, the Beetlejuice cartoon. So, and I remember they, they would air it, right? And I would want to watch it. And uh, my mom would get pissed because she knew what was going to happen. And you might be, you might be asking one thing. Well, wasn't that scary or anything? Yes, it was. And if it was scary, why, why, why were you so infatuated with watching Beetlejuice? I don't know, I don't know that, I don't know, but the thing is that my mom would forbid me from watching that movie because, because she knew 
what that experience would trigger uh, or did trigger sometimes or she would blame the fact that I would watch the movie to the events that happened uh, a couple of times uh, you know with me and she would say don't let him watch that goddamn movie because he will start seeing him again and that's exactly what what was what what would happen yeah it's it's i don't know it's strange right but the thing is that i remember i have these big blurry images nowadays the sensation is more clear that's what makes me remember it more although the images are very blurry i just remember my sisters around me trying to calm me down and me crying and uh just like sitting on a couch that we used to have and my sisters like around me i just remember look looking up up at them their faces like really concerned and kind of like scared obviously because you have a little brother that says that beetlejuice is right behind them so you just imagine that uh the whole thing i don't remember would just start out of random i don't remember if there was anything triggering it or what i just remember like sporadic moments of me just being in the living room and then we had this this frames this artworks around the house that my, my dad bought like previously like years few years from from then and then you know like basically very 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 typical art deco kind of things you know like paintings of like ocean views and towns and stuff like that uh-huh so i'm gonna show them i'm gonna show the picture i think i already did but anyways yeah and i remember just like staring at them and before i knew it from the the paintings themselves from somewhere around the paintings just like if he was like living there or something would come out like this little tiny figure that would like i don't know like show his face or something from like behind something in the in the in the actual picture in the actual painting and then like stare back at me and and start like i don't know like teasing me or something and then it would start coming out of the of the art piece i'm getting a little bit of goosebumps just by remembering that um it's weird and just like i don't know like making fun of me because i would i would start to get scared i don't remember it actually coming out of the art pieces of the frames i i, I just remember it like only part of it coming out it was very very little very tiny like a goblin or something like just very small i remember how small couldn't have been too big but just like this tiny figure coming out and just like laughing and making fun of me and teasing me i don't remember if it ever talked i don't remember that but the reason i call it beetlejuice is because it looked pretty much like him it was except it was like a bubble head of it you know very i remember because i remember this huge head more round and uh i just remember the huge eyes like yellowish or something and just like the general features looked pretty much like beetlejuice and i remember like the wild hair and stuff like that and you know i would start to panic i would start to cry and my sisters would have to like rush to me and all, all like oh my god it's happening again and uh and my mom would just be just like be absolutely like extremely upset and it was just a scene until and they would i remember them the voices of my sisters being like don't worry about it there's nothing there and me like pointing at, at the back of them like he's right there 
there. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 there's nothing there. Don't worry about it. And stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Until I would just like calm down and just like stop stop seeing it. And that's pretty much it, really. There's no, no finale or anything. Very, it ended up that whole, uh, that whole episode of my life just ended up like that. Probably one day they just never saw it again. And it was just, we would, we just moved on. Everybody just kind of struck it off and we just kept on with our lives. And I grew up and, you know, I probably as I started to get older, I just stopped seeing him. And, uh, yeah. That's it, pretty much. Very anticlimactic. Let me make it even more anticlimactic by acknowledging um, probably other things that might be not as supernatural about it. You know, I, I, as I said, I acknowledge the that uh, uh, you could give it a ton of explanations. I was very little, very impressionable, which I was. Um, I very little with an extremely overwhelmingly active imagination, which that was me. Still am right now, to this point. Uh, throughout my entire life, I'm gonna be like that. I've always had an uh, extremely active, vivid imagination. Um, you could say, well, you just hallucinated that. It was all in your head, which, which, yeah. Well, yeah, why not? Okay. That's fine with me. Um, I, I don't care. Still, they, that doesn't take away the fact that I saw it. And it happened. That moment in time is captured there of me seeing that. I remember that. Also, I recently discovered, not so long ago, a couple of years ago, by some uh, other form, other chain of events that it led me to get a, uh, a scan in my brain and they discovered that I have this condition in my cerebellum it's called Chiari it's a uh, it's grade one Chiari it, it can be very damaging to you but the level of my condition makes it harmless but basically it's an overgrown cerebellum and the cerebellum it's the the part of your brain that controls your your senses your it's your your animalistic brain your animal brain it controls your senses your emotion your perception stuff like that and mine is overgrown so there you go it's like maybe that cost it i don't know it's like so if that cost it what was it was was that was was that just like my cerebellum creating this image and making me believe that it was there or was my cerebellum um influencing my perception and allowing me to see something that was actually there it was is one of those things right it's 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 something that's never going to be uh, i'm never gonna have an answer for that and i don't care for it really and and another thing why beetlejuice uh, well, because I, I had that in my head a lot. It was a very strong thought in my head because I used to love the movie and the cartoon. I used to love the character. So you might say, okay, that's clearly a, a, in your imagination. Yeah, to an extent. You could also say, what if there was something else, some some other creature taking the form or maybe not having a form and the only form that my brain gave it was something akin to Beetlejuice. Why? I don't know. You know, it's it's again, it's just some it's just a mind juggle that it's never going to have an answer. It doesn't need to have an answer. It's irrelevant. It happened so long ago that it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter, right? Um the easiest explanation is just that, you know, it was all just in my imagination. I saw it because I was very little, very naive and innocent and very creative. And I just imagined it because that's what kids do. 
which is perfectly adequate for me. So that happened also around the same time, probably before kindergarten and around kindergarten. I, I, that and those memories are even more vivid than the actual Beetlejuice one. Crazy enough, if you can believe that, for what I'm going to say eventually. Because those memories never triggered any kind of negative emotion outside of slight sadness. I remember, I remember this incomprehensive feeling of sadness and empathy for for voices. I never saw anything. I never had any kind of vision or anything like that. It was just voices in the living room. So, for context, I used to play... I, I have older sisters. They're all way older than me. So, growing up, I used to play with them and stuff like that. But for the most part, they would be in their own world, you know, they were all women around the same age. And one of them was already getting married, the other one was about to. And the other younger ones were just like, pretty much like teenagers. And they are all like in their own world, all women, all around the same age, all experiencing their faces in life. And, that, and then me, way back, growing up as a boy, pretty much by myself. So, I remember just playing by myself a lot in, around the house, right? And one of the things that I used to do a lot was playing under a coffee table that we used to have back in those times. For the longest time, we had this very long, uh, low coffee table where I used to fit under. And I remember I loved getting under there because it was like this very enclosed very cozy uh place that i could like get under and just like feel like that was somewhere else i don't know you know you know how it is when you're a kid so i remember that that coffee table under the <laughs> under the coffee table had a lot of drawings because i would go i would get under there with a pen or something and i was just like doodle on 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 the on the on the uh you know the underside of the of the coffee table and i i, I remember that because one of the drawings pro pretty much the only drawing i can remember was a robocop drawing <laughs> i i remember that one it was like this deformed doodled robocop that i i made there so yeah i would do that and uh i would do that and pretty much that that that's not something that happened like the Beetlejuice thing where it might have happened two, three times tops. I can't imagine more than that. No 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 no. This was a regular event that I would even look forward to. It was just so normal to me. And I was so little that I just I remember I just assumed it was just part, you know, of reality. Just part of of normal life just as 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 anything else you know during your day I, I just assumed that was natural that was very normal and what that was was that I would hear the voice of a man under me you could say behind me because I was laying on the ground but it was under me it was below the ground I remember that below the ground in the middle of the living room it would only happen when I would get oh wow I'm getting goosebumps again by by telling this story funny I don't always get goosebumps telling this story but as I'm doing the video I'm getting them I don't know why Probably because, I don't know why, the mood, I tell this, these stories to people and it's usually a different mood. Probably because I, I expect them not to believe me. It's, it's either one, one of the two, two things. 
I know they're not going to believe me, or I expect them that they're most likely not going to believe me, that I don't take it as serious, or I tell them, I tell these stories to people who have experienced similar things, that I know that they might believe me. So again, it's very normal for me to talk about those things, almost as if they are just part of normality. So I don't get any feeling or any kind of anything. But since I'm basically talking by myself right now, and I know that I'm potentially talking to thousands of people, but right now I'm alone. I don't know. I'm just get, I just get goosebumps. Anyways, so there was a, a voice under the, under the floor, below, on the ground. I but I you I would hear it in my head, but I would get the sense that it was coming from below. Behind me, technically, because I was laying down, but from below, this male voice telling me to help him, and and it would get me this sensation of of like of like sadness. I re I remember not really thinking too much about it. Besides, of it's gonna happen eventually. It's gonna happen. You might say, well, you were programming it, but why did I program it to begin with? Why did I listen to it for the first time? That's that's my that's the question. What made me hear it for the first time, and then expect to to hear it the second time, and by that and that triggering me a program of creating it. You know what I mean? Like, and there's another thing, another detail, but I'm gonna get to it. Ah, uh, yeah. So that was it. A voice telling me to help him. And in my head, I would picture a guy with like curly hair or, or like undulated hair. Probably not too old. Also because his voice sounded young. But it was just like this male voice asking me to help him. And I would just get this sensation of like empathy. Like I, I wish they could have like done anything. But I was just like a little clueless kid. And I would just like be like, oh well. And just keep going with my life, with my, my activity, usually involving drawing under the coffee table. And then I would just move on. No fear, no anything. I would just assume it was just like a normal occurrence that could happen. Just like the occurrence on the closet, on my mom's closet. Especially around a corner. It's a very small closet. But... I would I was so small, right? I was like three, four, or five years old. I was so small that I would fit in the closet and have plenty of room to play in there. And uh pretty same story again. When I would get in there I would almost expect and I was almost wait for it. And sometimes I would even look forward to it, just out of curiosity, just like because it was just like this kind of almost <laughs> neat thing that would happen. There was, again, in my head, a female voice asking me to help her. And I would also imagine this young girl, because she sounded young. I remember, I would imagine her, I always imagined her as blonde, for whatever reason. That's it. Um, no, facial, no facial features or anything that I could remember. I would just imagine her as a blonde young woman or like a girl with like light hair, light colored hair, I don't know. But it was just the same story. A very sad, kind of like sad voice was t asking me to help her. And I would just like pause there for a moment and just like stay quiet. And then I wouldn't hear anything else anymore. And after a while, I would just like keep going my doing my day. And that was it. It was so normal for me that I, I don't remember telling anybody about it. Because I, I didn't even consider it to be like nord, noteworthy. It was just like, I don't know, hearing a car outside of the, of the house passing by. Or a dog barking. Or just like, whatever, you know, a siren going, going by, stuff like that. It was just one of those things that are so normal a helicopter passing by something that are so normal that you don't even comment about it 
but because since I was so so young, so inexperienced, I never assumed it to be something out of normality because you know, I just grew up with that. I don't remember commenting that to anybody until way later on, years later as an adult. Just talking about stuff like that to my niece, one of my sister's daughters. was My sister was living in the house when she had my niece, her daughter, and she grew up in the house for a long period of time. And uh, she would play just just like me. She would play around the house. Pretty much the same story. I was already older. And everybody else was older than that than her. So she would just play around by herself. And one of her favorite games was getting into her grandma's closet and play around there. Because it was just kind of cozy and spacious. And just like kind of in the corner there. So it was just like a little thing, right? Playing there, like her uncle, me. And uh, and she was just like, I remember talking about that. And she, she just gave me a look. And, uh, and then she was like, you used to hear the voice too. And I remember it was just like one of those things. We just, like, we just kind of smirked to each other. We, we looked. Or just, just staring at each other, and we just kind of smirked to each other, and it was like, "You, you, you heard it too." And she was like, "Dude, what?" And it was like, "Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about, right?" And she was like, "Yeah, this young female voice." And I was like, "Yeah, exactly, the the voice." I don't, I don't remember if she heard the male voice. I think she only heard the female voice, because yes, I think she only heard the female voice because. There was no coffee table anymore, and she never played around the, the 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 living room as much as I did, probably. So it was one of those things. It was just like very knowing, like yeah, I know. So I'm not crazy. You heard it too, and she was like yeah. So I'm not crazy. You heard it too, <laughs> and she was just like she constantly heard it too. And she remembers that it was like this sad voice. And uh, it's sad, right? If those voices were like true, I hope those entities, whatever they were, I hope they they moved on. I can only hope those those entities might like, you know, rest it and like moved on to something better. Those events are, are arguably more difficult to explain than the Beetlejuice one. The Beetlejuice one, you just shrug it up to me, hallucinating it. But this one, this these events right here of the voices, are something that was experienced by two people, separately. We were living in the same house back then, but we never we never talked about any any of those things at all. And she she experienced it by herself, not telling anybody. So that's more difficult. To explain, to give it just like a, a conventional explanation. So everybody, give a prayer to those to those two entities that might have been stuck there or something, for them to move on. You don't have to be religious at all. And matter of fact, I advise that you leave any kind of religion that you have. I don't have a a religion of anything. I don't I don't follow any kind of religious anything. At all. At all. But you can always ask for that side that is beyond you and your comprehension to do something and to intervene in a way. So you can do that. And finally, I'm just going to leave it at the, the shadow. Yeah, so this wasn't a childhood experience. This was an adult experience that happened outside in the street weirdly enough as a kid i never saw anything like this or i don't remember seeing anything like this ever but as, a, as an adult for whatever reason i remember seeing a shadow man a shadow figure and i'm getting goosebumps again okay well whatever following me outside strangely enough only in the street 
or outside outside of my house. First first time this happened was um uh on 2006. I'm getting more goosebumps remembering this story because this is actually creepier. The Beetlejuice one is the most terrifying one, but that happened so long ago and that is gone now. It's gone forever. It's like that's that's over that's so far removed from me that is gone. But this is more recent. This happened in 2006. Um, I remember that because a lot of things happened to me in 2006. So that uh, I associate that with those events too. And that uh, that thing happened there. I used to go to this institute that doesn't exist anymore there. There's a brewery. Uh, brewery. Oh my god. I, can't, I can never say that word. Brewery. Brew, brewery. There you go, brewery. Oh my God! There you go. I'm getting it. Brewery. There you go. Uh, beer making place. There's, there's that now there. But long ago there used to be an institute there. I used to go to that institute, and I remember I would, I would, I met the, the son of the principal of that institute. I became good friends with him. So I would hang out with his dad, the, the principal, and him, along with a couple of other friends too. And I remember one time I was hanging out in his in the principal's office. The principal took a very a liking to me because I was like kind of smart and kind of a little bit more mature than than the 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 you know the teens my age. I was like eighteen or something back then. So. Um, he just, he just like took like a special liking to me, especially I remember I was friends with his kid, 17 years old, something like that. And his kid was like any other kid that age, right? A little bit wild, and like, I don't know, like we, we were all like dumb kids. It's not that I wasn't a dumb teenager or anything like that, I was just kind of a little bit more mature than my my peers and he would like that because he knew that he stated that a couple of times one or, once or twice that he he was a little bit more uh comfortable having his son hanging out with me and probably going out somewhere and knowing that the chances of us staying out of trouble were probably a little bit higher because i was hanging out with him and he knew that i would probably keep everybody out of trouble so yeah anyways i was hanging out there and i remember one time i don't remember what we were doing or anything i just remember us being in the principal's office and this place it, since it's been remod rem remodeled that whole facility it's very different but there used to exist a little hallway that would go from the main hall entrance hall to this hallway that used to hold the principal's office and some like st storage rooms and another office and then at the bottom there was there was a kitchen so there was this this little um narrow hallway that that you see you need you need to to go through to go to the principal's office and I just remember being there. It was in the middle of the day, like twelve, like midday or something like that, eleven a.m. something like that. And I remember just being there, getting out of there. And then when I came out, I was walking out of the hallway. And for whatever reason, I turned back. And when I turned back on my peripheral vision, as I was turning back. And uh, as I'm saying that, I'm getting goosebumps remembering it. Looking back and seeing this little golem figure, this black, dark golem looking figure, like big bulbous head, kind of elongated, very thin extremities, like crawling to me. It's pretty much exactly like golem. I don't remember any features or anything. I just remember this dark shadow like crawling kind of fast towards th 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 me it was just like a split second and i just remember 
kind of getting that that reaction you know how it is when you just go and you just kind of I don't know when you just like kind of freeze there for a moment and when I when it was when I was when I did that I I looked directly at the direction of the figure and he vanished and I don't remember if I said anything I don't think I did because it would have been weird I think I said to my friend later on like yo I think I saw a shadow and I don't remember his reaction might have been like what really that's crazy he probably he might have thought that I just like hallucinated it and 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 that was it really I shrugged it off and uh I just like what what could have what could I say what what could have what could I do the thing is that building later on for whatever whatever faith of of life or whatever I ended up returning to that building to another part of that building that building is a huge big conglomerate of buildings around the entire block and they're all connected to each other you can't tell outside it's a, this very old building by old I mean a building from like the 40s or something you don't notice that the entire block the entire facility of the block is actually one one like single thing connected to each other anyways it's hard to explain but uh, I was in another part helping out some friends that I met for whatever faith of life I ended up meeting some people that introduced me to some other people that turned out that they were doing opening a gallery and uh, an art gallery later on when I when I started my art career and I was helping out and I started to meeting these people and I was hanging out and I was helping there and uh, and in conversations we started getting into spooky conversations because it turned out that a lot of people there had spooky experiences in that building and I remember one of my friends two of my friends there there are this this couple we were we were so you know what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that story to another video because this is just going to elongate this even more I don't want this to to get it too long so I'm gonna leave it at that there was more uh, experiences that other people had in that building I'm gonna leave it at that uh, I'm just gonna continue with the shadow again I saw it ah what two blocks away from that place I saw it again this time was I don't remember how much how much time passed that but probably one or two years later or maybe more than that five I don't remember I was walking in the street in downtown somewhere around two blocks away from that building where I saw it the first time I don't know if it was the same thing or what but it wasn't I was I was walking in the middle of the street later at, at during the day probably around seven, six five six seven p.m. something like that again for whatever reason I turned back and when I turned back same scenario looking back for the most for the briefest splitest of seconds I saw this little golem looking motherfucker crawling towards me kind of like fast and this time I'm getting goosebumps right now by remembering but I remember my reaction at that moment and my reaction with that in that moment was well nothing I remember just saw it and just being like whoa and and that's it and I was just like this keep I kept walking and probably because it was in the middle of the street or what I don't know you might argue you were in the middle of the street there's more people outside you might have confused somebody else for a, for a figure that looked like that no I'm gonna say that's not the case but I understand why you think that I understand why you would think that with the context that I'm giving even though you weren't in my shoes in that moment you can't see what I saw and just basically that's it you can't see what I saw but I understand and I respect that opinion because that's the only logical thing anybody can 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 say if they just hear 
the context. You're in the middle of the street. There's people outside. It's a very active hour. It's downtown. Any downtown doesn't have to be like a specific downtown. It's a downtown area. You might have mistook that figure for somebody else. And I understand that. I feel that that's a very... That's a very respectable opinion that I'm not going to to disagree, even though I know what I saw. And uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, um, this is my celebration of my 100th video. My 100th uh, subs, even though I'm like 120 already. How, why? How? Who are these, those people that are like subscribing now? Who, who are you? I don't know. What happened? Somehow, I'm not even getting any more views not or anything like that. It's just that I'm getting more subscribers now. And I have another channel that is doing okay-ish, I guess. I have no subscribers there yet. That, but that channel is all about movies and stuff. It's different. I moved that content. Anyways, moving on. Uh, yeah. I'm... I... Oh, yeah. Happy Halloween. And, uh... Well, yeah, yeah, just, uh, I hope you, you like this thing and this, these stories, I hope, I don't know, they were interesting. They were interesting to me, because they happened to me, but, um, anyways, I just hope this video was interesting, and, uh, yeah, just, uh, have a good, have a good one. There you go, take care, bye. Oh! And I'm recording this on the very, very exact day my niece's daughter is being born. What, Whatever your name is, ha, ha, happy birthday. I'm not recording this on Halloween, actually. This is way before. I just wanted to capture that moment. This this, this event, this is such such a unique happenstance. She's being born right now. I don't know. Have you... Are you already born right now? This late. And my niece was admitted to the hospital like a couple of hours ago and it's just like you know we're, we're, we're all like kind of just like waiting you know you know how it is you just kind of want yeah, I wanted to take something my mind out of it a little bit not not that I was stressed or anything like that it's just was like you know how it is uh, I just want something because you're thinking about that you're you're in expectation and everybody is so yeah and i just wanted to capture this so i don't even remember if my niece ever said a name yet probably it's not the niece from the story though although yep i have several nephews but although my niece from the story is also pregnant and expecting uh to give birth probably <laughs> around the same weeks more or less i don't know it's crazy I, I don't know how to end this i don't know how to end the video but um uh, yeah I, I don't know i don't know anyways i hope you enjoyed uh i hope this enough bye oh yeah happy halloween Thank you.